Good morning, guys. We're going to do a bit of a review on this thing here today. It's trying to spit on us right now, but uh, first of all, the fuel tank. This thing either burns fuel like a mofo or it's got the second smallest tank known to man because you got to fill this thing like three, maybe four times a day, depending on how long your day is. Like after like three loads. Three loads, you got to fill this thing. 160, 120 acre loads. Not big one. The death tank, you can get like a day or so out of it. So that's good. But uh, the fuel tank is just tiny. Now this is the six liter joist. The same as what's in the Fence 720. And I haven't had the best luck with that engine, to be honest. This little step is the biggest pain in the butt. This uh, folds up just to... You gotta pull this out, I think. Push it in, maybe. Push it in. There it is. Yeah, you're never gonna use that. All right, now that we're done, you just push that thing back in, grab this thing, and it locks right there. You're never gonna use that step. It's the biggest pain in the butt. But we're gonna go for a whirl with this thing and see how it goes. Let's do this. I guess before I go, I'll just show you a few things here. Uh, you got this side panel, as you saw when we were spraying at night. You got these little latches, and it's on a spring, or shock, I guess I should say. This, this, this is, this is overly complicated. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know about the durability of these little latches, because kind of, kind of get a push on it there to, like, just gotta make sure that's really in there. Also, uh, up on the front, you got them here too. Pop this one. Pop this one. That folds down. You got some handy storage in here. This is where you fill it. First of all, it's down to two inch. It's not super efficient. I, I don't really like electric ball valves, so this thing will shut off at 1,200 gallons. Not 1,210, not 1,205, but 1,200. And I'm not a big fan of that because, uh, like, there is no sight tube. If you want to know how much you have in it, you read off the, the pad right here, right? But once it hits 1,200, it's shutting that valve off. So you better have your pump final down or bad things are about to happen. And then once it's shut it off, then you shut your lever off on your cam handler, no big deal. Open this back up, depressure your hose, and then close it. So you're always moving. Like, you're uh, turning this thing on and off twice as often just for the pressure up reasons. Like, it's not like you can be reading it and be like, okay, we're at 12, or sorry, 1195, and then quickly run it off and shut it off, right? Like, it's here, you're over here, that's how it is. But I like the storage. I just don't like this setup. Lock this. I don't think this is very durable. Like, I don't think this is something that's going to last over a lot of hours. Just being honest with you. You also have more here. This swings out of your way. You got some soap here. You got some little ones in here. Those are kind of nice, but... This reminds me of the, how to get to these. Through this, that is basically... When you do a walk around with this thing, when you have to go through like two things just to get to your glove toolbox or wherever you want to throw your gloves for some small Stuff, storage is what I'm trying to say. That is basically a precursor <laughs> to the monitor. You gotta go through multiple pages to get to stuff. You gotta go through a couple things to get to stuff. That should tell you right there, you guys. Right. The other thing I'm not a big fan of is of this ladder. It kicks back underneath. But this is not a very user-friendly ladder. Like, I've slipped off this thing once. Like pretty much straight down and uh, so you can't go down on an angle like that I'm always used to going down like that forward you got to turn around and go back down that way not super user friendly and then when you're in here oh yeah you got to do these axle corrections all the time because since you have four steer axles or four steering they're all hydraulic and you know how what happens to hydraulics they seep so they can move maneuver themselves out of a line a little bit you could be dog tracking so, and this thing will tell you that because there's sensors on it, obviously, and it will tell you when you have to do 
a full corner this way to recalibrate and a full it only takes you like probably like 15 seconds it doesn't take you very long but it is something that you got to do at least once a day so we'll do this later yeah but this is your uh, ladder and there's nothing quick about this so hold it one way oh that's out hold it the other way wait for it 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 it's in now that didn't take us real long a couple seconds but that needs to be on your park brake because now you got to do the park brake there's your park brake so now you have to depress your brakes hold your park brake wait 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 it's off that's two things where you have to wait 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 that's that's not efficient you guys I don't like either of those. It needs to be a pop, snap the park brake off, ladder kicks out underneath there. We're operational, not two things where we have to mess around. Anyway, we gotta get going. So since we're moving here, let's comment on the uh, visibility. Uh, obviously the visibility on this sprayer wins, hands down. You sit lower than the average sprayer and you sit farther out there. Like other than this windshield wiper motor, you can uh, wave to the crickets on your way by. Like seriously, if you can't see the water with this thing, you're in big trouble. Um, with that being said, commenting on the cab, I do believe it's a Claus cab, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm reinventing the wheel being in here. Like I just totally stepped back into the Stone Age. This is nothing fancy by any means. Like this is probably the. I don't. Not trying to offend anybody, but like. If you sat in a case or a John Deere or even the Apache had touch screen and nice push buttons. These aren't push buttons. These are toggle switches from the 18th century. <laughs> With that being said, we have a top speed of 25.8 miles an hour. Uh, loaded or empty. It is not a high speed sprayer by any means. It has a top road speed or field speed of about 18 miles an hour. I think you could maybe do 18.5. But you won't get there unless you have uh, RTK or RTX because uh, the wads that there's on this thing, you will be out of control once you exceed about 15.5 miles an hour. That's where we had our uh, bonfire. Look how clean that looks now. Ready to seed for next year. Anyway, back on track. Now that we're going down this hill, let's look at our cruise speed. It doesn't limit you. Yes, it never mind. It was the other spray I was thinking it doesn't. The Apache doesn't limit you. This limits you. It will slow you slow you down going down the hill. Like if you can't get enough speed as it is, like you don't have all the power in the world to make that hill and it's gonna start slowing you down. Here we go. It's working. It's working. RPMs right there are uh, eight, 18 something, 21. Come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on. There we go. I gotta go, I gotta move down to some uh, land that's about, I gotta meet up with the rest of the sprayers. They're about 20 miles away. I'm coming, you guys, I'm coming. Although I also should comment that the mirrors are really good. You can see behind you, awesome. It comes standard with a backup camera that triggers when you go in reverse or you can hit it and you can also see behind you. Oh yeah, for those of you who wondered what's page two. Oh, we're gonna drive in the ditch. That's a camera underneath your tracks so that way you can stay in your tracks if you're on tram lines. So, it's super narrow. Like we're as wide as it goes. You see those tires out there? In my mirror, not out in the field. We're as wide as we can go. As wide as we can go, I believe is still narrower, or just about as narrow as uh, the average sprayer with its tires in. <laughs> Guys, this is embarrassing. Look, there's a high clearance sprayer gaining speed on me back there. There's a high clearance sprayer behind me and he's gaining freaking speed. Gosh, that's embarrassing. Come on, Amazon. Woo. Okay, he was right on my tail and then he pulled off on another field. Ah, oh, that makes me feel so much better. We didn't actually get past. 
Um, I see moisture. There's moisture. Um, uh, uh, uh. So, to make a job with this thing, you have to hit the little green button. I've already done this. You hit add job, add field, and then you have to put in about uh, five different steps. You have to put field, um, you have to put uh, farm name, and uh, a couple other things in there. And then you go down here, and then you can hit uh, the notepad, and you have to, uh, this is a task, make a task. It won't spare that task. And then once you hit the task, then you hit the record button. So the downside is, with this machine, it's not super user friendly. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's, there's always like, it's kinda like a, it's worse than a Case Pro 700. You know, I always kinda complained about that. Yeah, you can set everything up, but you still have to page through things. You've got all these pages, you page through, you page through, you go through your toolbox, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, this thing is very similar. Now, I know my way around this monitor pretty well. Why do I know my way around this monitor really well? Because this is a Borgo monitor. Well, I shouldn't say it's a Borgo monitor. I call it a Borgo monitor because that's how I know it. It's a Topcon monitor, but Borgo, for our air drills, uses it and also does Amazon use it. So I know my way around this monitor. But that doesn't mean that I like it. <laughs> anyway, so you, you do all that, and then you can swipe across here, and you can open stuff up. And then, uh, so right now we're on the red button. So that tells you, I'm going to hit it. Oh, sorry. This one. Sorry. So right now we're on the green button. And then this brings you all the different things that you can do. Your sectional control. Everything is programmable in here. You hit the red button. Then it's all on your booms. You can individual boom control or you can fold some in. Whatever you want to do. And then if you hold the button and hit the trigger on the back, it goes orange and then you can reassign yet again. So you have three options. So you got your boom in one button, then you got your, uh, your application in another button, and then on your third button you can do whatever else. Well that's kind of complicated because uh, like at first when we had it set up, like we had it set up half decent right now, but when we first had it set up like all the boom control was on the one and then you'd have to you would have to hit this button to get into your uh, product switch and master. Like, it was a gone show. But we managed to get it set up. So I run it on red. So I have all my booms controls up, down, center. Down here I have my auto boom. You can't lift this thing all the way up, and it won't stay up. So you can lift this boom up all you want to. I'll have to boom it out. You can lift it up, ding, 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 ding. As soon as you let that button off, boom, it drops it fast unless you turn off the auto boom. So you have to think about that when you want to lift up over a rock pile or something. Make sure you're up and over that rock pile because the minute you let off on this thing because your auto boom is still on, it's going to drop it like a hot sack of potatoes. You know what I mean? So normally, normally, I'm used to, you just like on the Raven, you just uh, lift that boom up and it's completely deactivated once you've lifted it up there. And it will stay up there until you just tap down or on the Apache, I think it was a double tap down. But either way, this one, it's always on. Unless you physically turn that button off, it's always on. So yeah, it will it will lift up no problem, but it will drop fast. So keep that in mind. And then on this button, I have the product switch, okay? And the auto steer is either this, which is, oh yeah, oops, right, I hit it. Which is either this button here, or you just have to physically hit it down here. So that's kind of old too, because I would like to have my auto steer button programmed into my joystick. I don't want to have to hit a trigger on the floor and I don't want to have to hit the button on the screen. So that's how this, that's how, now you can set this thing up however you want to, but if you want to get into your sectional control, you're still going to have to flip it over, which I don't like. All right, I want everything on one screen. So if you want to start playing around with your sectional control, you can go and it will go you can turn it off and but that's on another screen. So meanwhile, you're running with that and all of a sudden you're like, crap, 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 and lift the boom up and you're lifting like crazy, but all you're doing is shutting your sections off. How do I know? Because I've happened. And then you're like, crap, and you're trying to hit the red one. No, not the orange one. No, the red one. Hit the red one and then you can lift it up. So, to be honest, they've just completely overcomplicated this. Like this is, now the Viper 4, I know I've said I like the Viper, I really like, it's all on one screen. Your auto booms on one screen, your sectional controls on one screen, your GPS is on one screen, your boom height is on one screen, 
your rate control is on one screen, everything is on one screen. And you can customize that however you want it as well. But it's all on one screen. Your mapping's all on one screen. So if you want to be able to see what the heck you're doing, you got to have this on. Now you can have the mapping up in the corner or you can go like this or whatever you want to do. So that is kind of cool. But, so to get into here, so you have three pages in this one. You can hit this one. And then if it has a little white corner on it, you can tap it again. And then you have another three pages in amongst this one. Whoops. That's not what I want to do. So then you can hit this one. And then you hit it again. And then that's where your boom lights are. So how many pages did we just go through? I'm just going to go out. Okay. You want to turn your boom lights on? Maybe you have this on your run screen or maybe you have this on your run screen. So let's just go over here. That's one, two. Uh, one. Okay, it's on, it's on two. So three. And up here is four, five, six. Got to hit it like six times to get to your boom light. See, that's the problem. That's what I don't like. So that's how the whole system is. The whole system. Doesn't matter what you want to do. It's multiple pages. Now, you could be arguing, man, Mike, but think about your flexibility. Think about everything that you can do. Isn't that freaking awesome? I just want a valve. I don't want an electric valve. I want just a quick ball valve. Just give me a sight tube. Trim about $50,000 off for that valve and sight tube. I don't need to have the keypad. I don't need a keypad counting the gallons on the side of the tank. We don't have to have that. Give me a sight tube. That's all we need. Shave some money off these things. And uh, we don't have to have it so that way you can customize. The John Deere, you can customize the John Deere all day long too if you want to. Not as much as this. But you have buttons on there on that new 4060 that you can customize. But we don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to turn on the John Deere. You can scroll through your monitor via your joystick buttons. Or you could just go through. That. Like, like how hard is this? Like, We're overcomplicating this is what I'm trying to tell you. And we're paying a premium to do it. It's not like it's just coming for free. We're not getting it for free. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's start booming out.